responsible of the government to not have engaged us. Not only irresponsible, but insensitive, for goodness sake. These are human beings that are in the forest. And this is making noise because these are people that can come to the media and, and speak. All across the forest, in the north, we have our people to take in hostage. Nobody speaks for them. That's why we are raising our voices. And I call on every Nigerian that can speak up to do that and hold our government responsible. The Minister of Transportation, your primary responsibility is not to be running around trying to uh, declare for presidency when there's problem in your ministry. Solve this up. There's no way you can sell yourself in the North when this happened during your stewardship and you're not listening. This is my honest advice to, to, to Minister Amici. It's your responsibility for you to do this and brief the president. All right. I mean, you, you, have, you have said push the door open, um, that the federal government needs to listen to the people, that they need to have the milk of human kindness and need to be able to come down to the level of the people. Uh, again, it's almost as a statement saying that the government is, you know, excommunicated from the realities on ground and running around in a 360 circle degree. Now, again, I still come back to the question. There are still abductees in the forest um, where you have been, you have visited these people and you know what the conditions will be for some of these abductees. Now, the federal government needs to also be able to see this as an emergency. How do we begin to have the conversation to have the release of the abductees? I think that's what I would want to get from you today. Um, who should be speaking to the federal government? The whole Nigerians are crying out. There is a there is a die case situation of you know the immediate need for those people to be released. Women are there, children are there, pregnant women are there. How do we get them to be released? That is the immediate conversation. Right. And you see, AIT now, you do no part. Because God Almighty will ask each and every one of us, what did we do at this point in time when our country was going through this? You are doing your part. You don't have guns. You don't have AK-47. You're doing your part educating the world. I'm doing my part educating the world. We all need to put pressure on the federal government whose primary responsibility, constitutional responsibility, is secure and protect our welfare and our lives. On that count, this government has failed. On that count, this government has failed. We have children all across this country, in the forest. Leah Sharibu is still held by Boko Haram. Chibok girls, Athia with Boko Haram. Federal Government College, Bini Auri in Kebbi State, Little children, they are still in the hands of terrorists. And these are the ones we know. There are many more in the forest under captivity by this bandit. State governors want to put earplugs in their, in, the, in, their, in their ears and not listen. We know about this because it is getting closer to home. It's getting closer to home, and they have the capability to reach out. But all across our villages in the north, in the north, we have women, children, pregnant women, the aged, in the hands of bandits and Boko Haram. The rain, the sun, the insects, all on them. Nobody, neither a governor, nor the president, nor the minister of defense, nor the National Security Advisor, no, the, 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 the Minister of Police Affairs, address the nation. These are our people, and this is your primary responsibility, not building highways or flyovers, which governors and the federal government think is development. No, it isn't. Development is human development. Leaders of our time invested in us, that's why we're able to become productive citizens. But our governors, our government, federal government, do not invest in humanity. There has not been a crisis center, a crisis desk created 
for this uh, for the families of this uh, of this tragedy tragedy to go to we do not still know how many were killed how many were abducted how many are missing the manifest of the train tells you that there are 362 tickets bought but on that train it was reported there were about 970 mm -hmm. passengers mm -hmm. that is three times the ticket that was bought this is essentially fraud and ticket racketeering that has been going on for god how no uh, god, god knows how long which the minister of transportation needs to tell nigerians and the government of kaduna state came out and said that they had been writing to the Nigerian Railway Corporation for them to scrap the six o'clock scheduled train from Abuja to Kaduna based on intelligence. None of that was, 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 nobody listened to them. So these are lapses from the Ministry of Transportation that they should be held responsible. The Minister of Transportation must be held responsible. And in same places, the president will fire him that same day. So instead of bouncing around looking to be president, answer this question that is on your lap. That's dealing with human beings, not your selfish wanting to be president. I cannot see what he's going to tell this part of the country. I can't with this thing happening. So tomorrow or today, the Ministry of Transportation needs to sit down with the victims of relatives in the forest. And listen to them and update them what the government is doing. That is how responsible government and compassionate government do. Not run around looking for presidency or the president keeping quiet or nobody listening to them or the minister of, 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 of uh, information. I mean, irritating people and saying we're on top of it. On top of what? So please, govern more responsibly and more sensitively than we are seeing. That's all my call to the federal government now. All right. But the primary responsibility is to get our people out safely mm -hmm. as soon as is possible, because that's the responsibility of the federal government. Thank you. Uh, professor, yes, uh, get them out as soon as possible. Uh, people say how, because it also seems as if the federal government has lost the will, uh, do not have a clue uh, on, on, on the way forward. And, and I say that going by what the governor of Kaduna State, uh, His Excellency Arifai, said, uh, he made threats to import mercenaries to help with Nigerian security crisis. Because he feels that, of course, the number one duty of the federal government, the commander in chief, uh, who is supposed to protect lives and property, has failed. And um, that, that is also a statement of failure on, this, on, this, on the part of government. When the governor says we will be needing to import you know, mercenaries to come and deal with the crisis, as against what you just said about having conversations, having you know, an angle to it from a human angle perspective, um, the, 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 the Minister of Transport, who you have said, you know, needs to sit down and put his acts together to look at having conversations with the victims. I mean, in other clients, some ministers would have, you know, resigned to that fate. But uh, let's come back to looking at what can be done in the immediate. We have seen a lot of call for a state of emergency across some of the states in Nigeria with this dire situation. What can be done in the immediate? Outside the minister having conversations with the victims, with the bandits, with those who have done the abduction, what is the immediate conversation to be having with them? Is there an open conversation for negotiation? Do we really have to negotiate with terrorists? Right. Like I told you, the stakes are higher today than, than, than all previous abductions. Because now what we are seeing is the marriage between Boko Haram, Iswap, and, and, and this and this bandit. And when they came out, the video clips we saw, uh, they, uh, some families are saying they are not asking for money. And when they came out, the clips, the video clips we saw, they are saying the federal government know what they want. I mean, so this is about me. This is about my pay grade. I'm not in the federal government. I don't know what they want. I don't know their dialogue with the federal government. So it's only the federal government, agencies of the federal government that will answer this question. And it is your duty and responsibility to all media in this country to put the heat on the government, to come and tell Nigerians 
what is the way out? What are they doing? What are these people demanding? What can you do? What is the way out? That is the responsibility of government. I'm not privy to the intelligence. I am not in government. I don't know what they are talking about. This is not the right type bandits that want money and then they release people, people. No, this is a higher stake than, than before. And that's why we must be very cautious. We must do this intelligently. We must do this aggressively. We must do this quickly. The fact that governors and governments are aloof previously will not work here. So government must get involved. And you, the media, aren't the government. We've seen video clips that they say you guys know what they are demanding for. What is it and what are you doing? I have not seen anybody in the government that comes to any media place to explain. It is not the job of the military to dialogue or to explain. Neither is it the job of, of the police. We are in a democracy and it is our elected representative and they are appointees that should be addressing the nation. It is the president, the minister of defense, the national security advisor, minister of, of police affairs, the minister of transportation. We need to see them here. We don't want to see Garbashir or Femi additional. That is not their forte. There are people that are given that part of the administration to administer and they should come and talk to us. We don't want to hear any written report or report from media advisors. No, this is we are we deserve better. So the federal government needs to come and tell us what these people are looking for and what are they doing to get them out safely. And for the Ministry of Transportation to open a crisis desk, either in the office of the National Security Advisor, so their relatives can go in there and be briefed daily. We don't need to know publicly what you guys, what they are negotiating. But relatives need to be assured that the government is doing something. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the Minister of Information coming out and saying we are on top of this is not reassuring because they've never been on top of any insecurity in this country. Thank you. Well, Professor, the U.S. Department just recently announced that they had cleared the sale of 12 AHZ Cobra helicopters, attack helicopters to the Nigerian government to be able to use to fight insecurity. Um, and apparently, I remember that the lawmakers lifted this after they had concerns of human rights concerns. Um, some time ago, the, the deliberate Democrats and, and members of the parliament in the U.S. said that the government was leaning towards dictatorship and they were worried that these uh, defense mechanisms would not work because the government was not having conversations that were key. Uh, with the government, with the Nigerian people. But these monies released and these military wares that are being given to the Nigerian military uh, seem to not meet the target because what we still see is an escalated portions of insecurity in several communities. Now, do you think that the military is doing what it should do in terms, because again, the last resort is the military. If, if we cannot see the, the, the strength of the policing force within this community, do you think the military is well equipped to handle this issue? No. Yeah. Good. I mean, I've said it before and, and I will say it again. The military is brought in to handle problems that it's not trained to do. Essentially, what the military is doing now is internal policing. It is not trained for that. It is trained to protect us from outside aggression. This is the primary the responsibility of our police. Well, let's look at the military. How many boots on the ground do we have? Before the Nigerian Civil War, the Nigerian Army, the strength was... 10,000 were there about. At the end of a 30-month 30, 30 war, we had over 250,000. Now how many boots do we have on the ground? The Nigerian military is stretched all over this country, deployed in 34 out of 36 states. They are putting out fires everywhere. And even in some places in Zamfara, they are even asked to come and get involved in matrimonial issues. And the government is looking at this in the military way. This is not a military problem. It really isn't. 
I've said it, banditry is a social problem and not a military problem. And there's not going to be a military solution to banditry in Nigeria, even though there's crucial strategic role for the military. So the federal government must listen and address the primary problems locally. But going and saying, oh, we'll talk to them in the language, do you understand that? No, we'll not get it. They are now talking to us in languages we do not understand. Lethal. Federal government needs to listen and address this problem as a social problem is going to be cheaper, is going to be more enduring than all this military hardware. We are over militarizing security in this country. By that, I mean unemployment is a security issue. Poverty is a security issue. Uh, over 10 million children out of school is a security risk in this country. Our children, hunger and poverty is a security issue. 2014, a 50 kilogram of rice sold at 7,000. Now, seven years into this government, is selling close to 40,000. And the minimum wage remains at 18,000. That is in states that pay minimum wage. That is in people that have jobs. That is in people that have jobs. So people are suffering. So when you have poverty, when you have easy way of making money as bandits, I mean, bandits in some places in Zamfara has been reported by the report of former IGP MD Abubakar. They have as much money to pay informants, half a million naira to give them information. So they have money in the midst of poverty. You go all over the place. Mm. Governors in all the 36 states have emasculated local government. Everything is taken into the capital. Mm. There are a sea of poverty in all the villages, in all the local governments that have been made redundant now by the government, by the state governors. So when there is poverty, what do you want people to do? You go to many villages, I know in Katsina, you go to many villages, and it's not only in Katsina, it's reflective of many villages. You bring out a thousand naira, go into the village square, nobody can give you change. Mm. Because people do not have the change. Price of food right. is soaring, there is poverty, All the right. value of the naira has dipped. People buy kerosene, people buy diesel, people... So, All right, the Professor. federal government needs to address human capital development, poverty, needs to address corruption, mm. needs to address bad governance. Unless you address this, insecurity will continue till the end of time. Good governance is the thing, and we're not seeing that. Politicians are disconnected from realities of our people. Absolutely. In the midst of this insecurity, the worst insecurity of our lifetime, politicians are disconnected and only looking, scrambling for office for 2023. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Professor. Uh, Professor Usman Yusuf has been on our show and been talking about the plight of the abducted passengers, uh, what the role of government should be and how they should affect their release and conversations with the terrorists and what they really want. We want to thank you so much for your time this morning, Professor. It was good and insightful to have you.